Hello, welcome to Jenny's Food Network. I wanted to do a video response on a comment that um, a great fan of mine that's been responding back and forth with me. And he said in this comment, I'll read this off now word for word. Thanks. I walk at least two times a day now for a combined five hours. It's getting easier and easier. I'm starting to get out of the house more and getting used to and getting used to talking with people face to face, I feel like a million bucks. Even though I am losing weight, I get depressed because I'm still fat. I have to constantly tell myself that it's going to take time, just like how it took a while for me to put on the weight. Thanks again, Jen. So my response to that is that um, I know, I know, you know, if you compare yourself now compared to before, you're in a lot better shape you're a lot healthier now than before and that's that is what matters and on top of that just keep on being encouraged and be motivated to keep doing what you're doing because you want to continue on to better yourself even more it doesn't stop now it will continue so as long as you're putting a lot of effort every single day taking care of yourself as you should be already anyways and you have the motivation you determine you're starting to feel more confident you're going out there you're talking to people face to face you're feeling more self confidence in yourself you have already achieved so much already at that point. And for you, you will be inspiring or have already inspired people out there. I know for sure that for you, you had mentioned before in the email, in the message for me, that you were, you're like a five feet 11 in height, five feet 11 inches in height, that's pretty tall. And you used to weigh 400 something pounds and then now you weigh about 378 pounds probably by now you probably have lost more weight so I'm really proud of you for making a big change in yourself some people don't even make a big change for themselves in just anything in general that until it's too late their their health are being affected I mean their health their health are being affected um, they're not feeling good about themselves and they're not doing nothing about it you know they don't like the way they look they're not doing something about it so at least for you, you're doing something about it. And for me to do video responses to you, that is sharing your story. I mean, that is sharing your journey. That is showing like your achievements. And it is very, very difficult to go through what you're going through. And most of the time people just be like, you know what, heck with it, I'm aging, I'm tired, I really have no motivation, I really feel, I really feel lifeless, I feel like people don't care about me anyways. My life is not worth anything to anybody so who cares who, who would even care about me but I care okay I care very much and I know I know there are a lot of people out there that care about you what you're going through as well and they may be and some of them out there may be going through the exact same thing that you're going through now so just by sharing your journey with me and to put on YouTube and to share with other people that there is hope if you make a moment to care about yourself and a moment to share your story that will bring to more inspirations out there. That's cutting part of your good spirit and being honest with yourself and realizing that your health is at risk. You need to do something about it. Everybody should be taking care of themselves, of course, but sometimes people don't always have the motivation or courage to take care of themselves the way they should be. So for you, doing what, you do, what you're doing now is definitely a huge inspiration to a lot of people out there. You're not alone. You really are not alone. There's other people that are in a lot worse shape than you are. And it's up to them if they want to make a change for themselves or not. And it's going to take a lot of work, okay, for everybody. And, the, and he had mentioned that even though he is losing weight, he still gets depressed because he is still fat. Um, it's like, well, first of all, Fat is fat. You can still lose it. I mean, there will be loose skin. I mean, pregnant women. How do you think pregnant women feel? I mean, I put myself into that story because I have five children. I'm 36 years old. I told myself that by the time I'm 30, because my husband wanted a big family. He wanted four children. And for me, I was happy with just one child, you know. Having children is a lot of work, you know. And I said, okay, fine, if you really want four children, I'm going to have a kid every year. And by the time I'm 30, that will be the year that the last child will be born. That will make four children by then. 
and everything came true. I was pregnant for four years, four years in a row I was pregnant, okay? And luckily I was able to give birth all naturally. I took no painkiller, no epidural shot. I was actually scared of the epidural because it was just something weird to inject into my back area to numb the pain, you know? And if, you, if they shoot you wrong in some weird way, you can get paralyzed for life. So, sorry not to scare a pregnant woman, but... So, I was just afraid of the needle. I'm just like, no thanks. I'm going to go all out natural. So, every pain, every twitch, every screaming painful contraction during labor, I felt every ounce of it. And after I gave birth to the children, I after 30 minutes, they'll let you walk. They won't let you walk any sooner, sooner than that. So after 30 minutes, so what happens with the epidural shot? It helps numb the pain from waist down. So the mothers who are on the epidural shot, it helps ease the pain, you know? And your, the contractions are monitored through the computer screen. So what happens is that instead of having a mother going through so much pain, the epidural helps numb the pain for them, okay? It paralyzes their body from waist down. So even at, after giving birth, after 30 minutes, they can't even feel their toes. They can't even feel their waist down. It would take hours and hours. And for some mothers, it, it would even take up until the next day for them to even start walking. Because how can you walk when you can't feel your legs? So for safety reasons, for safety pur purposes, they will not even let the mothers get out of bed until they can start feeling their feet, legs, or muscles again, okay? So for me, since I was not on the epidural, after 30 minutes, I was getting up, I was washing myself up. After giving birth, I would walk around, I would help change the baby's diaper, I would um, hold him or her, and I would bottle feed the child each, after each child labor. So for the first four children, I went through with no epidural, even with baby Ken. Baby, Ken, I have five children, okay, for those who are not familiar with my videos. So after the fourth kid was born, after Keel was born, Keel is like five years old now. He'll be six this fall. So we thought that we're done having kids, you know. And so, well, the miracle, the miracle came four years later. Baby Ken was born 2012, year of the dragon of the Chinese zodiac. So, he's a miracle baby, but man, that boy can drive you crazy. He is Mr. Stress Attack. He is his way of the highway, but he's such a funny little silly baby at times. But he could be very demanding, screaming and yelling for everything that he wants. So, what do you expect? He's 19 months old, right? <laughs> so, he's about a year and a half and a month old. So, my point is, um, so for baby Ken, I went through the same process. No painkiller epidural shot. It was all natural childbirth. I had, um, I had no C-section, luckily I had no stitches. I know I'm a little personal on this, but for you mothers out there, new mothers or mothers who've had more than one child, you know how difficult child labor is and how much of a nightmare it is. So I was able to do, and you know what? And I only stayed at the hospital for like no more than two days. I would stay, for Brandon, I, still, I stayed for the first three days because he was my first child and we enjoyed the quiet time at the hospital, you know, with. Freddie and I, but as we had more kids, Freddie had to stay home and take care of the other kids, and I was all, pretty much at the hospital alone a lot. So it was okay, I was used to it. So by the time the baby's born, I'm already ready to get out of the hospital the next day, right? I just wanted to come home. So it's funny, after giving birth, after the baby's like one day or a day and a half old, I'm already like coming home, I cook for the family, I'm serious, I'm like crazy. I came home, I cooked for the family, I was doing laundry, I was lifting things, you know. Over time, your body, it's just me. My body just can't sit still. I, so after the baby's born, for each, you know, for the first four kids, it was normal to me. I just, I cook for the family. I clean, I do laundry. And the baby's only like a day old or a day and a half old. Strange, huh? So anyway, so my fifth child, baby Ken, by the time he came home, I was doing the same thing, cooking, cleaning, doing laundry. And I have to take it easy, of course, so. But I still did things, you know. I was not laying in bed all day. Only for my first child, for Brandon, he's almost nine years old. He'll be nine in August. So he, when he was born, for my first child, my body was not used to ever being pregnant or 
giving, you know, having child labor. So he gave me the hardest time because my body had to adjust to something that was so strange and so awkward and losing a lot of blood for during labor and all that stuff. And, you know, strangely, not to scare you all, but after you give birth, you're still like going through like the bleeding for about up to 10 days, you know, so not to scare you, but hey, that's just part of life. If you have a wife or a girlfriend who's going through child labor, you're going to have to know that. At, you're going to have to know that anyways. So, yeah, so, so I have a lot of respect for women who go through child labor because it is very difficult and very harsh on the woman's body. Believe me, it is. And I went through that five times. And so, sorry to get back to the topic. So, me being pregnant four years in a row for the first four children, my body did not have time to rest much. My body did not have time to lose the baby weight, the pregnancy weight. I was pregnant one year after you had the other. My children are born in the year 2005, 6, 7, 8. Can you believe that? That's the first four kids. So, I'm a great example to show that I didn't have time to lose weight much at all. I was pregnant constantly for four years. And after that, I had a four-year break. My highest weight with the fourth child, uh, my highest weight was 153 pounds. That's too much weight for me. But that was part of the pregnancy, okay? And so it took me about a, a, little, a little over three years or almost four years to almost, it took me like a little over three years, almost four years to lose about 40-something pounds, okay? So I went down to 107 pounds just from like eating properly and exercising and not overeating for pleasure, you know. So, so I went to I went down to 107 pounds, and then it only lasted a few months, and I got pregnant again. So now um, after baby for Ken's pregnancy, I gained 30 pounds, you know. So I went up to like almost 140 pounds with Ken. Maybe Ken, and so now I'm trying to lose it. So, so when Ken was a few months old, I had lost weight down to. So I was about 140 pounds with baby Ken after he was born. I went down to 118 pounds. When I went down to 118 pounds, I wanted to get back into lifting weights, like doing squats, doing upper body weights, and doing push-ups and doing chin-ups, pulling your body weight up. I started to gain more weight, and my muscles did firm up a lot, and my muscles did get bigger. But at the same time, I was enjoying to eat. I was enjoying eating. So I was eating a lot too. And I should be careful on that, of course. But when you work out a lot, you kind of have cravings to eat more. So I was eating a lot and I was exercising a lot. So I had to be careful on that. So now my body weight went from around 140, okay, when I was pregnant with my fifth child. After he was born, I went down to 118 pounds. And now I'm about 133 pounds. That's a lot of weight. I'm only like five feet one and a half inches in height. I'm not very tall. So having that amount of weight, a person can look bigger, okay, compared to a a, a woman who's like five seven in height, you know. So for me, I'm still working on my pregnancy weight. I'm still trying to. My son is like I said, my fifth child is 19 months. I know I'm being harsh on myself. People are like, Jenny, you still need more time, you know? I'm like, I understand. I want to be thin again in a healthy way. I want, I have extra fat on me that I don't need. I mean, I understand that muscle weighs more than fat, of course, but there's still some extra fat on my waistline. There's still cellulite from the pregnancy. There's still, like, excess skin that you can't prevent from pregnancy. When you get pregnant, your stomach, a woman, comes out like over 12 inches you know what I'm saying because there's got there's fluids in there there's a baby okay in there in the sack you know and your body your body's retaining fluid in order for your body to survive and for the baby to survive your body's intaking a lot of nutrients and you know it's part of pregnancy you're gonna gain weight for pregnancy in order for the baby to survive and for you to survive so when your stomach is stretched out like that it's expected to have some loose skin, and 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 for pregnant women, you have to really exercise and eat healthy. Because if you don't, the skin is going to get looser, and your muscles is going to get weaker. So if you start working out, cardio, doing cardio and weightlifting, you're going to start tightening up the skin. You're going to start tightening up your muscle. Can, and so you're going to pretty much be 
in good shape as you progress in life instead of getting heavier or getting more overweight not taking care of your health not exercising not eating right you're gonna become even more beast than ever and so to prevent that you have to take care of yourself no matter how many children you have okay and there are people with no children that are really out of shape so that shows that they really have to take care of themselves too they should be taking care of themselves to begin with but some people just tend to not make enough effort to what they're intaking as food and to the amount of time that they spend watching TV compared to the amount of time that they're even exercising. So for me, being at the age of 36 years old, it is very hard to be skinny again compared to when I was in my 20s or teens. You know, when I was a teenager and then in my 20s, you know, and now I'm being in my mid-30s, it is very hard. It's getting harder and harder to lose weight as you age. So I have to put in a little, little more effort to exercise. And plus going through pregnancy, the extra cellulite, the extra fat on my waistline, I hate it, but it's part of pregnancy and that I have to understand that having children in life, a female has to go through pregnancy and that it's the female's job to take care of herself regardless of anything. You should be taking care of yourself every day. So that's what I'm doing now. I mean, the person who wrote me this message, it's like you're, you're depressed while well, you're lucky you know, you're not a woman that you have to go through pregnancy what I did five times. And for me, going through pregnancy five times, the pain that I went through at the hospital with no painkiller, no epidural, nothing beats the pregnancy pain that I went through, okay? I understand if people go through car accidents or some illness or some cancer, have to go through chemotherapy. I know they go through a lot of stress and pain too, but I'm talking in regards to like pregnancy, weight gaining. I'm not talking about accidents, okay? I'm talking about real life situation here. So... Yeah, so if you're feeling fat, well, I still fat, I still feel fat, too, because I still have a lot to work on with my pregnancy weight, okay? And I still need to take care of the children. I still need to help take care of my husband. So I have to take care of everybody in the household. You know, that's just part of being a woman. That's part of me. That's part of my job to help out with the household as being a full-time housewife, okay? So that's it for now for this message. Thanks for watching.